Hello and welcome to Biteside. I'm Seamus Byrne. If you've been watching the Olympics at the moment, you may well be feeling inspired to get fit or get into a sport. But the pandemic is also still out there, so gyms aren't as attractive as they have been. Team sports also pose their challenges right now. In that sense, it seems like a really great time for home cycling or even just cycling out there on the roads. But it's a sport that you can experience on a bike within your own home or alone. But if you want to make it compelling, especially within the home, you need some kind of smart tech or video game idea to guide and motivate you. You can see where I'm going with this because you've already seen the title of the podcast. Yes, Zwift has carved out a patch in this space as a video game experience that is all about cycling and doesn't take the fitness class approach to exercise in the home. Today, I'm catching up with Wes Salzberger the country manager for Zwift in Australia and New Zealand, to find out a lot more about the thinking behind Zwift and this whole video game exercise hybrid sim experience that it offers. Wes actually joined the company from a background in professional cycling. So we talk about his own journey of discovering and accepting that indoor cycling can actually feel really rewarding. We spoke ahead of the Olympics while the Tour de France was still in full swing and shortly after Zwift had run a series of Olympic virtual series events in the build-up to the Tokyo Games. I ask a lot of questions to try to tease out as clearly an understanding as possible about what Zwift really is and how the experience works. I'm sure the proof is in the pudding, but hopefully this helps paint the picture of how Zwift balances the entertainment of a video game with a true riding simulation for those eager to focus on getting that fitness experience. Well, let's start at the beginning, right? So I guess where did you, know, what's your sort of introduction to the company and what your, the elevator pitch almost is of <laughs> what Zwift is uh, and yeah, how it's you know been changing over recent times. Yeah, so my my background is I come from a professional cycling background. So I was um, racing in Europe for around eight years or so. Yeah, wow. Uh, come, and I come back to uh, Australia and then I uh, started to uh, get into a little bit of coaching um, with the Cycling Australia. And then from there, I started to look into doing some some cycling tours, which is yeah, pretty pretty booming at the at the moment. Uh, for, for a few other friends were in, into that as well. Um, so then I was actually using Zwift uh, when it first sort of come in the beta stage, and I started to to you know I was living in Tasmania at the time and started to realize you know indoor cycling can be fun um, with 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 something that to really uh, capture you and and make it a different experience. And you know, coming from a professional cycling background, that was that was pretty hard for me to actually sort of admit that. Um, from that side of it, I really didn't enjoy indoor training. It was something that if it rained two days in a row, I was like, okay, now I have to have to do an indoor session. Um, <laughs> yeah. But with this, I was blown away by by connecting with you know people around the world and other friends and former teammates. I was able to um, you know, get a really good workout in and and train and communicate uh, with you know, a really broader community. So um, from there, I started to um, explore a little bit further. And as Zwift come here to Australia, they did a bit of a back in those days, 2000 and must have been 2017, they did a road show. And uh, I went along to that and met the VP of marketing, um, Steve Beckett. And uh, from there, along with an interview with uh, Matthew Keane and a little bit of a background on myself, actually started commentating on the uh on the live streaming of, of Zwift Racing. Cool. Um so yeah, so that was my intro um to the company and and from there they were being they've been trying for some time to fill the role uh, of country manager for Australia and New Zealand. Um so yeah so fast forward uh, uh you know four years now and uh it was I think it was about 80 people in the company when I first started with Zwift and we're up over something around the 500 mark or like that now. So it's been, I've seen a big, a big change from the startup phase. Uh, yeah. Right through to, to where we are now having your know, Olympic uh, virtual series and Tour de France virtual series on the platform. So it's pretty, yeah, it's been a really, a really fast and fast paced ride. Yeah. What for you, I guess, coming from that background, what was it that caught your eye about Zwift? Because again, you know, there's lots of home fitness kinds of platforms. There's lots of well not necessarily lots but you know mm -hmm. there's other ways to sort of say i want to do a you know practical workout session mm -hmm. in a cycling context 
Um, but obviously, there's there is something different about the experience here. Yeah, definitely. From from that side, Zwift does focus more on the sporting aspect of this. So, I'm coming from a sporting background and seeing other other professional athletes using the product as well, that really uh, did help influence me. Obviously, a lot of people's touch point is they they know someone or have a friend. Uh, so, you know, nudge nudge, uh, come come ride with me on Zwift. Um, so from that side, of it, I, I did have that same approach. I knew other people that were using the platform. Um, I tried it out at a friend's place. And then before I knew it, I was going down to a local bike shop and buying a, a smart trainer. Um, so I guess we haven't really explained that part of it, but, you know, to, to jump on to, to that part, you know, of this, the cycling side of it. Um, and obviously we have running too, but from the cycling side, you're taking your, your normal, uh, sort of, a bike so it can be a mountain bike or a road bike or a hybrid bike and putting that on a trainer and, and once you've got that on the on a trainer that can be ranged from a smart trainer which is a, like an inbuilt power meter into that um trainer um or you just your general sort of a-frame trainer that you might see at a kmart or sort of thing with that resistance against the tire um so with that you know you've got a number of different levels you can start at um, with some speed sensors and sort of cost effective up in a couple hundred dollars Right up to that sort of, you know, uh, you know, sort of the midpoint is about a thousand. And then you've got smart bikes now these days as well, which, uh, you know, are up around the, the four to five thousand um, dollars. But with the adjustability of that, you know, it can suit the whole family as well. Um, myself, I have a kicker bike um, and that's a full, like fully adjustable, sort of like a like more along the lines of an exercise bike uh, with with some built in intelligence with it. Um, so yeah, essentially putting your, your height and weight into the game, um, and you feel that direct resistance. So you can climb up, uh, we have a range of different courses, like, uh, a mock of, um, uh, what we saw on the tour the other night, um, or Mont Ventoux, we have, uh, Ventop. Uh, so we have some really solid challenging sort of climbs in there that you can, uh, test yourself on as well as training programs. Um, so that was that was sort of my lead in back to that part of the story was uh, I was using as as training I was still racing internationally across Asia um, with a Japanese team at the time and uh, I found this yeah a great workout and great fun and great way to connect with um, my like minded friends around the globe. And so let's talk a bit about then if you're doing a, a race through this or something. It, I mean, it does seem like I mean, again I'm yet to sort of have you know hands on time with it at all. But from everything I've been looking at, you've got a mixture of you know okay, I just want to jump in any time and do a course, mm -hmm. or you can actually do it at certain timed windows. Is it so that you're actually you know you are at the same time as other people, you know, doing a race or a course or a challenge of some kind? Yeah, definitely. From that side of the community, uh, have correlated a lot of events, uh, and some how this sort of first started. Uh, you know, they were just there was no uh, sort of scheduled events like we have now an events calendar. They were just saying we're meeting up here, sort of like you would uh, out, out the road. You're meeting up at this coffee shop or from this corner at this time, and let's go. So with that sort of you know of the communities automatically uh, sort of filtering their own events, yeah, cool. uh, we started we started to schedule those. Uh, so. One of the one of the longest run, runs we have here running in Australia is called the Aussie Hump Day, which happens on a Wednesday night, hail or shine. It's on at seven o'clock, seven p.m. Yep. Um, you know, and, and they get anywhere from uh, up to you know the peak of uh, five hundred to a thousand people on that ride. So, you know, the the community really um, has has built the event side of it, and we have our marquee sort of events, which uh, recently had like the the um, Olympic um, virtual series as well. Um, and previously, you know, Let's Hap and the Virtual Tour de France. So there's other um, sort of tier events that we uh, that we have as well as as well as those um, community run events um, that are on the platform. So the content is sort of on demand and it's there for you to explore. And there's a range of um, either the races, group rides, workouts, um, and then again, if you choose not to do any of those, you can just choose a world and go free ride. Um, which then you may bump into other people um, that might be at your pacing, or you might try and keep up with someone that passes you and get that little bit of a, you know, uh, competitive kick. Yeah, nice. And so it's probably still w uh, worth explaining those other subtleties there of like when you're in the game, what are you seeing? Uh, is it almost like a virtual world or MMO kind of a style of a thing where you are seeing other people in real time within these virtual environments? You know, are you are you hearing speech nearby or things like mm -hmm. that like what what are those kind of cues for what are what's happening in this virtual cycling world 
Yeah, so as you log into the game and, and you if you just clicked in and press free ride and we just logged in and, and joined the game, we'll see a list down the right-hand side of the screen and that will give you all the riders' names, obviously, but the country flag as well so we can see all the different nationalities. There's a chat function there as well. So um, using your mobile, you can have a um, companion app which uh, which chats through to the game. As long as you connect on the same Wi-Fi, that'll that'll connect up. Yep. Uh, and that way that we can communicate and chat with nearby riders. Um, and obviously, when you when you join an event, you have uh, sort of like a lock chat to that event. Yep. But otherwise, you can communicate with other people around you. Um, and the other aspect is that when you're uh, riding, you know, around. Uh, these these virtual roads and exploring um, the different terrains. Obviously, that changes if you're the resistance. But if you're sitting behind someone, you actually get a virtual sit, like so you feel that drafting effect. So yeah, that's nice. there as well. So there's this it's sort of bringing that the um, you know the outside indoors. Um, you know, it's not taking away from outdoor riding. That's what a lot of people um, have really uh, sort of seen this, especially sped up through the pandemic, as complementing their outdoor riding um, yeah. for a weekend. So if you're a weekend warrior, you know, you may only just go out on the weekends, but this is enabling you to be fitter and healthier and uh, probably go a little bit further and faster than your friends uh, who are going on Zwift on the weekend. Yeah. And look, I did, I noticed you were comfortable using the word game in there in that answer, mm-hmm. you know, so again, there's so many, you know, things where they talk about, oh, it's like, it's a fitness product with some mm-hmm. game features, you know, yeah. or in this, it does seem like it's a very game focused almost experience but making sure that it's got that real high level right we talk about racing Mm -hmm. sims all the time in you Mm -hmm. know in driving sort of context and the fact that ultimately driving sims you know can be at a level where someone is genuinely practicing a track you know like real race drivers will use sims so in some ways i'm getting that feeling that this is almost down that path where you're thinking well it's a game, but it's a game at a level at which people are really feeling that competitive push. Yeah, and and with the esports side of of things really progressing as well, you know, there's definitely gamification side of Zwift that um that obviously mimics the the cycling element in real life, but has its own sort of its own sport. Really, it, you can't really com- compare the the two. Um, and you know we have uh, like for exa- example like of the gamification of racing we have power ups as well available so as you go through different checkpoints in game uh, you actually uh, get these enhancements which can make you either faster in a sprint or faster in um, in a climbing um, sense so there's a few and drafting as well so with those different um, power ups which we call them the gamification side of it you're able to like use them tactically um, to your advantage and and deploy them like you would in a, say you know a Mario Kart or cool. or those sorts of things except that that, you, know, you re- you're really peddling it out um, in in this aspect uh, instead of bashing the control <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is, yeah, that's really fantastic. And so, yeah, I've written about it earlier on when it was first being announced, but we're getting really close to, uh, you know, Olympic season. So, you know, can you explain a bit about some of these tie-in events? Um, you know, and I guess the fact that, again, there are the kind of almost elite tiers of it, but also things that anybody could potentially participate in. Yeah, and with with, with that, we've had um, a range of these Olympic athletes uh, you know, ride lead as well. So you can jump in these events and you can actually chat with them um, and as well as uh, take part in some of their workouts. Um, and we actually had some podcasts as well with those workouts. So cool. you, you could uh, you could ride along and um, you know uh, get a really good workout in and, and learn a little bit more about the athletes as well at the same oh, time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So that, I, I really found those quite, quite engaging and, and quite um yeah, quite engaging to get through the workout <laughs> to listen to something else as a distraction because some of those workouts were definitely challenging. Um, and how that works as well, the workout obviously is is catered to to everyone. So your ability um, as the game learns about you, if you don't put in too much information in, it will it will automatically give you um, that workout to to your level and ability. Um, so everyone everyone groups together in a group workout as well. So no one's dropped. There's there's no uh, no drop effect. So you'll yep. stay together. Um, in that sort of rubber banded um, group ride as well. Um, yes, yeah, so with uh, OVS, we we had a you know, a great a great amount of people uh, jump in and and take part with that and um, really enjoy the experience of of rubbing shoulders with you know Olympians, uh, former Olympians, and also current Olympians um, heading to the games. Yeah, and so you mentioned the you know the the kinds of equipment people need to get into it. 
I guess at its most basic, basic sense, what is it that sort of Zwift uh, that you need to kind of then sign up? You know, you've got the piece of equipment. Uh, mm-hmm. How is it you're then part of you know Zwift and its community? Yeah, so from from that side, once you've and most people that we find to um, they'll they're convinced and like I was and I went and purchased the hardware and, and then we'll, we'll see them make the uh, Zwift account. So we have the, a free seven day trial with that when you sign up. So you go onto the Zwift.com website, um, make it your own unique account, and from there you'll uh, you'll uh, it'll work on a monthly subscription base to access and play the game. Um, so for us here in Australia, it's it's twenty one dollars ninety nine, so twenty two dollars a month Australian. So um, quite quite affordable um, from that sense. Um, some of the, some of the other platforms um, have a higher price point than that. So yeah, from that side, you're able to access and play the game. Um, and from that side too, if you're only interested in, we haven't really touched on that too much, but on the running aspect of it, it is in beta. So if you only wanted to run on Zwift, um, so you can utilize running by either a foot pod um, or using a smart tr- treadmill as well. So if you only chose to just to run and use your treadmill, um, it will be uh, free for you. But if you want to do both, cycling and running, um, then you'll have to have to pay the um, the monthly membership fee. What, like, what do you feel like Zwift is competing against? You know, because again, it's sitting in a really interesting hybrid space of you know taking itself quite seriously as a game and as a you know fitness mm-hmm. system. Um, what do you feel like you know the other things out there are that you're trying to convince people you're better than? Um, yeah, from that side, we we do sit in a, a little bit of a different bucket of being quite unique with the community aspect of it and. Obviously, the sporting aspect, which I mentioned before, about uh, we are we are uh, heavily sort of targeted to cyclists. Um, and as we start to evolve, and one thing that uh, we look to have further coming in the future is some hardware as well. So with that, that will start to expand our our probably our reach um, from not being so top heavily focused on on um, our mainstream cyclists and more the recreational fitness person enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, from that side, we'll we'll have some further announcements and things coming for that. Um, but at this stage, yeah, we we do sit um, in a very community orientated um, side of, side of uh, indoor fitness. Um, you do feel very connected when you jump on Zwift uh, with with those and you're seeing those different names and people passing you and the avatars passing you. They're they're real life people. Um, so that is a really a really unique sort of um, uh, part of Zwift and. People really enjoy uh, being sort of finding the finding their own community or creating their own community on Zwift as well. And we saw we saw that um, really at peak through through the pandemic of, of COVID. People really uh, making a lot. Like I think it was about six times the amount of meetups. So you you, know, you can make your own. Um, as you were asking about for the event side of things, you can make your own designated event in a in a world um, on Zwift. So you know that could range from our um our utopia world to london and new york and other other um worlds that we have on the platform as well um so we yeah we did we did see people wanting to connect um with each other and, and ride with each other um during during this period yeah it really hits me that i feel like a lot of other services are competing with each other but like almost in the way that they're all very class oriented you know like it's you're taking a fitness class at home whereas this mm-hmm. does seem like you're offering you know quite a different sort of an experience and in that sense it it almost inherently is separating itself a little bit in in that regard yeah it does feel like a, a, a more of a, a a virtual world escape um into that aspect of it and mm. and you are you are it's a little bit different to you know, more of the um of the sort of spin class sort of on demand style yeah. things and we do the, the unique thing that we have is that we also have the workouts there as well which we're integrating with with podcasts and things things uh to keep uh keep keep you stimulated and interesting and obviously throughout those workouts um you know we we have um some motivating text and everything on screen as well uh as well as the real life people that are typing in games and uh and motivating and spurring each other on as well so let's talk a bit more about the you know the world options someone actually finds in the in the game. What are all the different places that someone can explore as part of this? Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad you asked because because that's one of the most fun parts about uh, Zwift. You know, of sort of that world hopping and 
and being able to to jump on you know a different world and um that's that's one thing that i really enjoy and obviously we all have our favorites um so we have a number of different courses that we work with the um, uci the governing body of cycling for world championship courses so we've lined a, a few of those up in the past and we've got the one here in yorkshire um and also um we've got uh richmond in um in uh canada as well um and then we have also from our tour de france side of things that we did last year we have actually the champs elysees circuit so you can ride around the champs elysees nice. as well as as well as uh then uh mont ventoux which was in the in the uh tour just the uh last evening um so we have different names for those two they're inspired so that's ven top in in our in our world and then probably our, our most used well would be uh watopia which is a, a made-up island um which is loosely inspired by uh, by Long Beach and and the office there on some of the coastal roads, um, as well as some of the the um, the forest areas of of um, sort of the the uh, na- national parks and and things in that area too. Um, and that actually has a a Alp de Zwift, which is twenty two switchbacks, uh, which is our version of Alp Alp Duez as well. <laughs> yes. So yeah. You've, You've got uh, you've got lots of you know scenery and and different things to explore uh, you know, from mountaintops to to seaside sort of coastal towns, um, and then I mentioned I think before maybe uh, about the New York as well with the glass sort of roads and ceilings. It's a futuristic take on New York. Um, that's one of my favourites to race on. It's quite a quite a, a steep little climbs uh, and uh, undulating course. Uh, but if you want to take it a little bit more easy, you can ride around Central Park and. And uh, you know, look at the uh, glowing Tron horses that are that gallop around on the side of the road there as well. That's, um, that's awesome. And our, our latest course is um, is actually Japanese inspired, uh, the Mercury Islands. So with that one, you've got a mix of sort of countryside uh, along with um, along with some other little sort of village towns as well, uh, and some of those roads which which are, are dirt roads as well. So you get a little bit of little bit of dust flying up and uh yeah it makes for a bit of fun as well now on a course can someone you know like is are there times when there's like a left and a right and you can choose different directions or something or is it mostly once you've chosen a course you're sort of you're on that path yeah that's a really good question yeah from from that side when you join the game you actually you'll, you'll pre-select your route uh, but as you approach to different intersections as you sort of just mentioned there like within other other sort of games you you do actually pop up with that with that question would you like to still continue on this route uh, so you can click uh, and alternate routes as well um, on the fly um, something that my my seven-year-old parents uh, haven't seemed to work out yet but um <laughs> but they they seem to sometimes go the wrong way and they get frustrated that they're not riding with each other <laughs> uh, I, I keep telling them you got to select the same course but um, it doesn't quite get through <laughs> now you know again in a game context we're talking about a bunch of virtual uh bikes i have to know you know what kinds of Cool, oh, absolutely. Bike yeah, yeah. customization must you be able to do in this? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, from that side, you, you've got a you've got a number of ways of just really customizing your avatar. Uh, and as you progress and ride in game, um, the gamification side of that, you start to level unlock, and and with that comes some little goodies along the way. Oh, so nice. That'll that'll range from you know helmets to shoes, uh, you know, to bikes. Um, so we haven't uh, most of the uh, the big brands covered um, in there that you could think of with specialized, you know, Giant, Trek, um, Pinarello. You know, we've got the European brands in there as well, uh, and we've just got put some more gravel bikes and some off road in there too because um, we do have some some uh, courses and with uh, our new Japanese inspired course Umezi just going in game. We do have countryside gravel roads with with that course as well. Yeah, that's great. No, like neon trails and things yet, you know? Like- oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We do. Um, so you, oh, you see do. the background behind the behind me there. We've got um, we've got a New York uh, course in game as well, which is inspired off a future futuristic New uh, York. Cool. Um, so you actually, yeah, the view, the um, listeners won't be able to see, but behind me in my um, in my uh, background picture, I've got yeah, the, the glass sort of sky roads that um that you climb in New York. Um, and one of the other things uh, with that we do have a Zwift concept bike um, that's in game, and that is like a glowing Tron bike. Ah, um, so awesome. you've got to do you 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 sort of can quickly guess uh, the level of a commitment of that Zwifter if they're rocking one of those bikes around <laughs> because it's fifty thousand vertical meters of climbing to unlock that bike. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> 
Yeah, so it's it's earned with uh with a lot of uh a lot of um yeah a lot of workouts and rides in game to uh, to unlock that one and virtual meters. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, a different class of of grind. You know, cause, uh, every game, you know, often people will talk about the grind to to get to the top. So that one is literally <laughs> get on the bike yeah. and climb fifty kilometers. <laughs> yep, just straight up in the air. <laughs> Yeah, and it's 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 one thing that um that yeah people uh, obviously with the game of the game vacation side of things people start to explore and uh, and push to see what what else they can unlock. Um, obviously, we have the bike bike unlocks, and as you ride in game, you you earn um, like Zwift drops. Um, it's not it, it feels like it's almost literally sweat drops, but it's it's the Zwift drops. <laughs> um, but you you earn those in game, and um, you can utilize those to purchase uh, equipment in game, and again pushing on that gamification side of it as you buy these these different equipments uh, with your with your sweat drops that actually does make you faster in game some of the equipment um, some of it is just purely aesthetics and looks um, but there are some there are some different um, you know bikes and wheel sets and combinations you can you can um, have like helmets and things as well that that will make you faster in game so yeah there's incentive there to uh, to keep riding awesome and so you know what's exciting you about you know, the year ahead. I mean, I guess, you know, well, it's it's Olympic season. We've got Tour de France is still on right now. I'm sure you're probably working some weird hours just to fit in watching all <laughs> the uh, the races that are going on. Um, that, well, Tokyo, nice. At least we get the uh, we get mm-hmm. the alignment of the uh, time zones for a change when it comes to Olympics this year. Um, but aside from sort of events that are happening right now, what's exciting you for the year ahead? Yeah, we are with the Olympics just just wrapping up. Um, that was that was a great campaign for us and it was really well received. Um, it's great to be part of that for Eric Min, the CEO's um, you know, long long term uh, sort of ambitions there to be included in the LA Olympics. Um, so that that's a little little while off, but um, but that's one of one of the one of his his goals for the company. Um, but yeah, we we do have a, 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 towards the end of this year in September we we have a a major campaign which we have each year. Which is targeted at um, at female and male cyclists to take part in the Zwift Academy, and with that we uh, we have a, a male and female win a pro contract um, to go directly into uh, into the pro teams. Oh wow! Um, so we, yeah, we had um, we had two Australian winners um, this year round. So we've had um, we've had really good success actually with Australia and New Zealand um, taking part. Uh, and really, really seeing this as a platform and, and um, stepping stone to getting across to Europe and racing all all the big races. Uh, so yeah, it's it's certainly um, that's our, that's our, our our big one coming up um, in the in the short term. And then uh, for for next year, um, we will have some some new expanding uh, expanding worlds um, happening as well, and we'll have some other other further further announcements, which are yeah definitely worth staying tuned for. Look, it really does. The more we sort of talk about this, there's so much of this that does remind me of, you know, the sort of driving sim world because I remember, you know, a few years back, Gran Turismo did do some series where, you know, it was online competitive modes, but the people at the top then did get to go and, you know, Mm -hmm. do some training and potentially get some contract opportunities. So, you know, that idea that like and seeing how seriously people would, take that because mm. you know there's not that many opportunities to break into the pro scene and so it seems like in a similar regard here that for so many people you probably don't even know where to start all you're doing is just you know working hard doing your best and seeing an opportunity like that must be you know must drive some people to really really push hard yeah definitely and you know i, I come through the Australian shoes sport program for for road cycling uh yeah and that as as that sort of evolved, some of that program has pretty much been dissolved as well um, from a road sense. So yeah, this is a great opportunity for for young, um, you know, inspiring cyclists coming through, uh, looking for that for that you know that leg up and that way to get to Europe. And uh, you know, this isn't just um, just with a with a feeder team sort of leading into the pro ranks. This is you know directly into into a pro team, um, which uh, you know the. The, uh, from that side of it, the, the men's teams racing the Tour de France uh, this year, and, and uh, obviously uh, in the years to, years to come, we'll have um, the Tour de Femme, which we're sponsoring as well. So we'll see also the the female side of it with their jumping in the in the Tour de France as well with the, with their team. Um, so I guess yeah, where do, you know where do people go and find all the 
the details for getting themselves tuned in. We'll make sure and drop the trailer into the uh, the you know the web page that this will sit on as well, so people can you know hit hit play and um, get a quick sense of what it is we've been talking about. But yeah, where else should people go? Uh, yeah, to to uh, Zwift.com uh, website, um, that's our best bet there. And also we have a, a range across on, if you're j- jumping on YouTube, we have um, a, a number of different video clips uh, if you're unfamiliar or want to go into some more details of what we sort of spoke about today of the equipment side of things. Um, if you jump on the, on the Zwift um, YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of how-tos and help there as well um, of understanding what we chatted about today. And if you're a little bit lost, now, you know, I guess a last yeah, personal question, do you do you miss being out there in the, you know, the elite tier of competitive uh, world, given that's where you came from? Uh, you know, or, I mean, I guess this probably in some way still gives you a taste of it, but, you know, do you still try to get, as you say, compliments really being out on the road? So how do you sort of still get your, uh, your fill of competitive vibes? Uh, yeah, I, I I still take part. I mean, we've got a with uh, Oz Cycling, we've got a race on actually this evening, a club series race that we're that we that we're um we're doing with with them. So I'll, I'll be taking part in that tonight. So awesome. I still get a, still get a kick out of out of um out of racing online. But I'm actually training at the moment for a duathlon nationals for in August, um, which are in real life. Uh, so yeah, I'm utilizing a lot of the training um, programs at the moment to to sort of target that, and then the worlds are actually here in Townsville um, next year for the duathlon um, world championship. So um, I'm I'm using uh, I'm still I'm still still using uh, Zwift to to um, aim for my goals outdoors as well. Um, so I'm hoping to to try and uh, come away with a, with a win there here in Australia. That would be pretty awesome. Awesome. Uh, duathlon is that running and bike, or is it the swim and the bike? Yeah, it's the run. Thank God. Oh, yeah, it's good, a yeah. run. It's a it's a run in the. Bike. I was going to say, I have, I've yeah, yeah, I hate I hate swimming, um, but I'm like, oh, I I would look into a duathlon sometime because I love running, but I yeah, and I don't get on a bike nearly enough. I'm like, that sounds good. I also love well, that you. I, I am sure you spend a lot of your time using the uh, in real life qualifier uh, when you're talking about different things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, a little, a little bit there. It sounds like if, if you're interested there, Seamus, we, sh- we sh- if you're going to a duathlon, we need to. Uh, you can do both on Zwift, so you can utilize that throughout the week to prepare for for the duathlon. We'll have to get in touch uh, after this uh, if you're looking to, looking to explore that. That's yeah. Actually, it sounds like a lot of fun. I re- yeah, I ran my first marathon a few years back and loved it, and then the pandemic hit and I lost my match fitness. Um, so mm-hmm. I need some help getting back into it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've, I've take, taken part in a half a um, half a. Um, uh, geez, no, I was going to say I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking too far ahead here. Um, I've taken in, in a half in half a um, uh, marathon on, on a treadmill once. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it gets a little bit too uh, too too warm. I think uh, some some better fans next time if I attempt that again. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, it's it's. Uh, I think the timing that they usually do, like the Sydney Half Marathon, is you know it's mm-hmm. very early spring, and so it does mean that it's still quite chilly in the early morning, and that is exactly what you need <laughs> to take the edge yeah, off. <laughs> absolutely. Look, yeah. Wes, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. No worries at all, Seamus. Thanks very much for chatting with me. Thanks again to Wes Salzberger, country manager for Zwift. I do really hope to get a chance to try it out once I can visit Sydney to pick up a bike without having to isolate at home for weeks after doing so. This has been the Biteside podcast from Biteside.com. Don't forget to check out all the latest stories or grab our weekly newsletter. I'm Seamus Byrne. Catch you in the future.